Converge or diverge, sigma when n goes from 1 to infinity, sine of 2n over 1 plus 2 to the n. We have a trouble here, sine of 2n, because when we plug in n values, n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. On the numerator, we get sine of 2, sine of 4, sine of 6, sine of 8, and so on, right? Those numbers are measured in radians, and sometimes they are negative, sometimes they are positive. I don't know if it's alternating or not, but then it's okay because we have an easy fix for this situation. Whenever we have sine or cosine in the expression that causes this being sometimes positive, sometimes negative, we have an easy fix, and that is we will check the absolute value version of this instead. So let me tell you, instead of working with this, I will check the absolute value version of the original. So that's checking for absolute convergence or not. And let me show you how it works. So let me just write it down. We are just go going to check. Let me put down sigma where n goes from 1 to infinity. And I will put down an absolute value. And then we'll put down this inside. Sine of 2n over 1 plus 2 to the n. If we have this absolute value, and if this converges, of course, the original converges as well. And the good thing right here is that when we have this absolute value, we have this sign factor inside. And once again, this sign factor, it causes the expression inside. Sometimes it's being negative, sometimes it's positive, but it's okay. The absolute value will make everything positive inside, right? Furthermore, we know sine of any angle has the maximum value 1. So on the numerator, we know this is always going to be less than or equal to 1. So I can write this down. This is less than or equal to, we have the 1 on the top, and then the denominator stays the same, 1 plus 2 to the n. And also let me write down the sigma notation, and goes from 1 to infinity. And once again, absolute value of sine of 2n is less than or equal to 1. That's how I was able to build this up. And you see here, 1 over 1 plus 2 to the n. This is always positive now. I don't need the absolute value anymore. And now we just have to work with this. Well, if you ignore the 1 in the denominator, you are looking at this as sigma when n goes from 1 to infinity. And then we just have 1 over 2 to the n instead. Do we know much better about this? Yes, we do. We certainly do. Because this is a geometric series, we know r is equal to 1 half. We can look at this as uh, 1 over 2 to the nth power, right? So r is 1 half. Well, 1 half is less than 1. And from the geometric series, we know this converges. All right, and now let's talk about what good does this do? Can we build any connection between this one and that one? The only thing different is that we took away the one in the denominator. Look at this. Originally, this part here, this is bigger than that denominator, right? But when you have the one over this, it's going to be smaller than this one. So let me just put down less than or equal to. The bigger the denominator, the smaller the reciprocal is. So now we know this is less than or equal to that, and this is the convergent, which is the finite value. We can also conclude that this is a convergent, right? So this right here converges. And likewise, this is less than a convergent. So of course, this at the end also has to converge. So now here's the conclusion. The absolute value version of the very original this right here converges by direct comparison test, right? Because we have the inequality. So let me just write this down. Also converges by direct comparison test. And likewise, this is also a convergent by direct comparison test. And I'm just going to tell you, if the absolute value version right here converges, when you don't have the absolute value version, of course, it converges as well. So now I can just write down the final conclusion here. You always write down the conclusion and then put down the very original. And that very original is a sigma where n goes from 1 to 
two infinity sine of two n over one plus two to the n converges because it's just not because it converges absolutely, meaning the absolute value version of that converges. So this will be a good argument to show that it converges. That's it. That's it.